Watch it guys, today we're taking a look at Windows tweaking and optimization, the myths and reality of actually tweaking your version of Windows. So what do you actually get out of tweaking Windows? You're gonna see loads of different applications that can de-bloat Windows just like this one here. You're also gonna see loads of articles online with tweaks and other registry hacks and things like that telling you that if you do this, it's going to boost the performance and optimize your version of Windows and make it super, super fast where you'll get massive amounts of gains in FPS and things like that. But there's one big vital bit of information they forget to put on their videos or in their articles online, and that is they don't show you the before and after when playing games or just general use and showing you the actual differences with Windows. And that's because they can't, because it's just the placebo effect that you're going to get when you do a lot of this stuff. You're going to have peace of mind that running these tools are going to disable a bunch of stuff inside Windows. But a lot of people are showing this on a virtual machine or a machine that is completely brand new of install. And they're not showing you after you've installed all your applications, all your games and everything else. And you've been using it for a few weeks. And then take a look at the processes that are running on that system. After you've installed all of the applications and security programs, it will start to add on more processes on that particular uh, machine. And as you use the machine over time, those processes just grow. So is tweaking Windows a complete waste of time? Well, only you can answer that because a lot of people seem to think that it does quite a lot of good to their system. And of course, when they're playing games on an older computer, and I will say older computer because the most people that are doing this are doing it on old systems which were probably built, uh, you know, 10 or more years ago, and they're trying to get every ounce of speed out of it by reducing the amount of bloat that comes in Windows 10 or Windows 11. So they go ahead and go for a bunch of sequences like this to try and lighten the load a little bit on that older system so it sort of gives it a little bit of more of a boost. But how much of a boost? Well, it's probably going to be you know, within margin of error, you're not going to see a massive amount of difference. And this is where people sort of get tricked into doing it. And it ends up breaking the operating system and they end up having to reinstall Windows and go for all this palaver again. And again, when you update Windows, that also puts a lot of stuff back to default settings. So really, when you're messing around with sort of this stuff, you can end up spending far too much time doing it and breaking the system rather than just using the computer for what it actually is. Sometimes it is time to upgrade to a newer computer. You can't always stick with something that's 10 or 15 years old and expect it to perform like a modern day computer. I guarantee you, if you use the modern day computer and you compare it with that old computer, you'll see a massive difference in advancements in technology and performance compared to something that's that old. So really, it's just really up to you whether you want to continue tweaking your system, I make videos on tweaking your computer because that's what people like to watch. And also I have the knowledge to do it and I want to share that with people who like to do that sort of stuff. Doesn't mean I do that on my own computer. I don't go through a bunch of this sort of stuff and do that on my own system. You even may see people talking about virtual memory and also performance options and things like that. They are going to be so negligible, the difference in the uh, tweaks that you're doing there. It's just not even worth worrying about. So I just believe that a lot of people waste a lot of time doing all these tweaks, thinking that it's going to make a 50% difference in performance on their computer when it's just simply not going to do that. As I've said before many, many times, the only way you're going to get performance out of a computer is changing your hard drive to an SSD or changing your CPU to something more powerful or adding a bit more RAM into the computer to give it uh, more RAM to use when you're opening up applications and things like that. So really, that is the only way that you're going to get a massive amount of performance boost rather than going through, and you honestly believe that there is a registry tweak out there that is going to make a massive difference to your computer by just tweaking the registry. It's just not the case. 
Now, if you're one of these people that actually believe a lot of this stuff actually does a massive amounts of difference to your computer's performance, because it says high performance doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get a higher performance by doing it. it. You won't hardly get anything from it. And if you're one of these people that go in and disable the search and indexing and things like that, thinking you don't need it anymore and this is going to make your computer faster, then again, you're just going to be disappointed because it doesn't actually do anything. So a lot of these things that I see every single day on the internet, on articles or on YouTube, in YouTube videos telling you you're going to be able to boost your PC performance by 150, 200% or 50%, it's all just lies and it's to get views and people need to stop doing it and following it because it's just a trend. It's been going on for many years. People used to do this many years ago and now it's just still continuing today where you take up startup programs at the startup folder, go into here and change it to high performance, go into your NVIDIA control panel and make a bunch of changes in there as if that's going to give you massive amounts of frames per second it's just not and it's just people misleading people to get clicks and views or get you to go to their website so don't fall for this sort of stuff because it's not going to help your pc that much and uh yeah if you've got an old potato computer then maybe start thinking about saving your money and putting it into a new computer which will probably serve you better and also if you're trying to do this on an old machine playing games play the game stop messing around with your computer thinking that's going to make a massive difference because you don't see people like shroud or people like that that play games professionally going into their system and doing all of this nonsense to their computer they got a brand new computer and they play games and they put the hours in and they practice and that's how they get good at it it's nothing to do with registry hacks and you know tweaking your nvidia control panel and all this nonsense just you know, play the game and enjoy yourself rather than going through making messing around with your system, trying to get the best out of it. And then realizing I've seen people even tweaking their network uh, settings, trying to get better network. And that program they're using was back in dial up days. I mean, it just don't make sense. A lot of it. And people go in and start messing up their computer and then their Internet's really slow all of a sudden. Or they've been told to remove uh, Windows Defender because they say that it will speed up your computer. And eventually what's going to end up is you getting infected because you don't have any sort of detection, uh, antivirus detection on your system. So, you know, we're living in a time where the internet is full of malware. And uh, the last thing you want to do is take away any sort of defense from that computer. Windows is very easy to infect as it is, and just making it more super high risk by removing things like Windows Defender from the computer. Now, before people jump in the comments section and say, hey, what's going on here? You've made videos about uh, debloat scripts and things like that. That is correct. I have. And I've done that many times myself. But I have never told you that this will make your computer faster. What I've told you is this is how you can debloat Windows if you're one of those people that like to debloat Windows. Do I debloat my system with those scripts? No, I don't. I don't touch my main system. I use it for what it is. I'll go in and make some minor changes in the privacy settings and turn off the background apps through there using the settings inside Windows. And that's pretty much it. So that is basically it for tweaking your system. If you're one of these people that is fixated on uh, utilization and memory usage and also CPU usage and processes and all this sort of nonsense, uh, you know, you're just wasting your time. If you're using Windows, don't you think Microsoft would know better than anyone else on how to get the most out of their system? Now, I'm not saying that Windows isn't bloated with unwanted applications that comes straight out of the box, or it doesn't come with a load of settings that you can turn off manually. Of course, that's the case. And some of these scripts will speed up that process, and they're quite useful. But the ones that are ripping core key components out of Windows they're the ones you want to steer clear of because they're the ones that are breaking your system. Now, until someone actually shows me uh, where you are gaining FPS and you're getting much more better performance when playing games by doing all of this, I'll be happy to eat humble pie and say, you know, I was wrong. But until that day comes, which there probably isn't going to be a day because I've tried it with Windows Lite and also standard Windows, and I've not seen any difference when gaming. 
There is no difference as far as I'm concerned. The only thing that's difference is you're having no bloat, i.e. no apps pre-installed and you're not having any sort of background apps running and things like that. But on a modern day computer, you hardly notice any of that stuff really because of the amount of processing power and RAM that we have in our system. Now, if you want to see uh, gaming on a Tiny 11 compared to a stock Windows 11, let me know in the comment section below because there is no difference in performance, I can assure you. Anyway, with that said, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.